those that don't know, Christian and Jim are the first daughter, father inductees into the Athletic Hall of Fame in the history of this game. Okay, it's my pleasure to ask Dr. Kogovich to come up to the hot seat. Okay. Coach Logan, I'm going to try this again. Okay. When I moved, when my wife and I moved to New Concord 12 and a half years ago, we didn't, we really didn't know anybody. I knew Steve by reputation. I knew who Red Oak was because I coached one of his best friends in the Skinner Hall of Fame, member Roger Welsh, for eight years at Capitol. And I knew Jeff Haycock from competition. That was about my extent of knowledge of the town. So, you know, it, it was, you know, you want to get out, you want to meet people and so forth. And the one place in town you can meet people is down at the Circle K. Because <laughs> everybody goes in there and get coffee. Okay? And one day, I was talking with Coach Haycock at the Circle K when Red Oak and Steve walked in together. In fact, you all probably didn't know that Steve owned a farm up towards Bloomfield on Liberty. Oak and Steve said that they were going to the livestock sale to buy a new donkey because the other one had died. Steve and Oak asked Jeff and myself to go with them. Jeff couldn't because Colleen didn't give me permission to go. <laughs> so I went. So off to Barnesville to the livestock sale, we went. We got back to that little farm up on Bloomfield. We got the don donkey out of the truck carrier. Steve had the donkey by the bridle and was leading the donkey down the hill to the door of the barn and Oak was following behind. Well, Steve got down to the door of the barn and started in and the donkey wouldn't fit. The donkey was too tall with its ears for the door. So Steve backed the donkey up. They stood there trying to figure out the situation. Finally, Oak says, well, let's get a saw. We can notch it notch the top of the door where his eyes are hitting and cut out for the ears when you just walk him in. <laughs> they stood there for a little bit longer, looking at both, you know, both of them looking at it. And then finally Oak says, well, wait a minute. How about let's just get a shovel and we'll dig down a foot or so. And that way we won't need to cut on the barn if we, we can walk the donkey in. Steve scratches his head and looks and he says, Oak, what's wrong with you? You dummy. It's his ears that are too long, not his legs. I've spent 33 years in the Ohio Athletic Conference, and I've worked with and known many faculty reps to the NCAA and to the Ohio Athletic Conference. Some just did it for their title. Some just did it for the ego of the position. Some did it just for prestige, prestige not Dr. Kovic. He was always putting the student athlete first. When you talk to him, it was always my school, my student athletes. And you didn't hear that from the other FARs. It was all about them. It was never about Steve. It was about his school and his student athletes. 
In the 12 years that we have we worked together, he always referred to Muskingum as his school. Very proud. Very proud. He took the position of faculty athletic representative very seriously. In fact, little known fact that many people don't know, when we vote at conference meetings, the FAR, the faculty athletic rep, each school gets two votes. The faculty rep gets one. The athletic director gets a half a vote, and a senior women's administrator gets a half a vote. Before he voted, he always talked with myself, the late Donna Newberry, and now Beth Fox, our women's head basketball coach. And the first thing out of his mouth was always, what is best for the scam and what is best for our student athletes? And that's how our vote went. Dr. Kokovich always represented the scam university and our student athletes at the annual Clyde Lamb Award Banquet with class, character. As many of the FARs were dry and monotone, Steve always had the attention of the audience because he had researched each honoree and made each presentation a very personal presentation. Steve was always very dedicated and passionate with his speeches. In fact, two of our inductees were introduced by Steve at the High Athletic Conference Clyde Lamb Award Banquet, Cheryl and Kristen. I hope you guys can remember that evening. I have always known Steve as a person of honesty, dignity, tact, and who you could rely on to come to your aid at any time. He was always there for advice, always knew more than he let on, always knew more a little bit from above him than he led on, and he always tried to steer you in the right direction and keep you out of trouble. In my 12 years working with him, he kept me out of trouble quite a bit. Quite a bit. Um, and, and warned me and gave me a heads up. That's the kind of man he is. A quote that I am very fond of, Steve and I are both what you call valley guys. I'm from St. Clairsville. Steve is from Adena. We're valley guys. In a quote that you brought up with, in the valley, the valley always leads to the mountaintop. If you're willing to stay on the path, weather the storm, and make the climb. Steve was faculty rep for 27 years member of the Muskingum University faculty since 1976. And there's a couple other things in the program. A very true and loyal supporter of Muskingum University. He was also a two-year letter winner in football. The only reason he lettered two years is because he transferred from Memphis State. He started on two 72 teams as a defensive end. That defense in those two seasons, 18 games, if my math is right, 18 games, eight shutouts. In 61, they allowed 87 points, and in 62, they allowed 49 points. A very big part of the success of those teams in that defensive unit. Again, the valley always leads to the mountaintop. If you're willing to stay on the path, weather the storm, and make the climb. Steve, Valley, Adina, Muskingum, Hall of Fame, you reach the mountaintop.